Hey there everyone and welcome to this short video today with me where I will be sharing this short paragraph from The Legend of the Star Crash, uh, one of the super cute books from Dolores Cannon, <laughs> who we all love. Um, yeah, So I want to read the part about the creation legends because as I was reading it I really felt compelled to share with all of you because it's so cute. Um, so apparently these beings here who were um, the descendants of the old ones who are the beings who came from another star universe, uh, star system, uh, apparently from the Pleiades. So they have many creation legends. So there's one that they have that they say it's more complex. The other one's supposed to be just shared more on a simple level, like shared with the children. So I want to read it to you, um, both of them, um, two major ones. And I think it's really interesting. It has some of the aspects. I think it was uh, so cute when um, the person who's here in this um, hypnosis hypnosis um, he shared that when he looks at the stars they're really moving eh? and that the elder the wise man said no you know it's earth it's the earth's the travel around all the suns and he said no you know that's not possible because when I look at it it, it kind of moves yeah so it's interesting to see how um, how people have um, been thinking before you know before they kind of became more advanced in their understanding of creation so okay um, I want to read the first creation legend yeah one legend says that the stars really exist, they're really things. They're not just points of light to look at. And there is this great unimaginable void out there. It is said that the old ones could traverse this void the way you and I would walk through the woods. It would be most miraculous. They could travel wondrous distances through this void. They would go from one star habitation to another star habitation. They were not limited to just the village they came from. They could live anywhere they wanted to and it is said that when they approached our sun the place where we live appeared like a precious jewel suspended in the void and that it was round and pretty which is one of those things you just have to accept as part of the story i mean i walk through the woods and the ground looks flat to me but they said when you go far enough away from the earth it appears to be round that is the story i was saying i thought was an in-between type story back before there was anything that existed everything was white and here is the, the legend um, begins. You know how just before the sun comes up and there is light all over but no shadows? That is the way everything was at the very beginning. Nothing existed yet. All there was was light. And this was pre-Bible uh, <laughs> times, by the way. So, um, and the light was divided up into pieces. And the, these pieces of light became the sun and the moon and the stars. Uh, this very much resembles the prism of Lyra and the theory of uh, it's almost like the whole reality uh, is like a shining glowing disco ball and then it fragments into different pieces of that light that are all like replicas of the whole um, so and the light was divided up into pieces and that's what they became after the light was gathered up into pieces of light it left dark between the places that were light and this was where the earth was formed in the dark in between out of dark materials metal and dirt and such as this as this and through the interaction between the dark places and the light places, an energy was caused, and this is how life was created. Do the legends say how this happened? They're unclear on this. Some of them just say, and it happened, <laughs> and so it was. And some of the others say that something happened to affect the light to cause it to divide up into pieces of light. That somehow a great sound, the sound of creation, was made and you could feel the vibration of it. You know how you can hum and you can feel the vibration in your chest. Well, this sound was so deep and so great. Have you been there? You could have felt it through the soles of your feet. You would have felt it throughout your body. You would have felt it everywhere. And the vibration of the sound is what caused the light to divide up into pieces of light. And then this caused the material to form into the earth. I'm not sure how that happened. The legends are not clear. Somehow after the light divided up into pieces of light, there was stuff left over in between that was dark. I guess the pieces of light soaked up all the light. I'm not sure. And in the dark places in between, there was still stuff that was dark. 
And so the dark stuff then collected together and formed the earth and the trees and the plants and animals and everything. There is an order that they did it in because first the stuff in the dark places collected together to form the earth. You see everything comes in balances. And some say that is the reason why the universe came into being because there was just the light and it was not balanced. So it had to become balanced between light and dark. Then the material that was left over in the dark started dividing up and balancing out also because the vibration of the sound caused things to keep changing and balancing out. For example, the dark part things collected to form the earth so you would have solid and void a balance. And then on the solid part things again kept balancing out to where you would have solid and water. Things kept doing this and as a result that is how life and the variety of things came to be. The animals in the sea, the animals on the land, the plants and everything. Somehow it was to balance everything and it is a very fine-tuned balance. That is why it is important to live in harmony with the earth so as to not disrupt this balance. Now at the same time all this dividing and balancing was going on with the dark part of the universe that created the earth and everything. We believe the light part was also still dividing and balancing out. As a result, there is the light we can see and the light you cannot see. It still divides up and balances into other forms of light and energy and it is said that it has balanced out into as many different forms of light as there are plants and animals and such on the earth because everything has to be in balance. <laughs> and since the dark part of the universe representing the earth or the material part kept balancing out and dividing into many different things, the light part also did the same thing. So there are many different kinds of light, many different levels and such as this. You can only see just a little small part of it. And you either have to have special abilities to see the rest of it or you have to be very spiritually advanced to be able to comprehend these other kinds of light. You said there were two or three different versions of the story. Is that the main one? That is the most complicated one. <laughs> it's not really complicated, but it's sweet. It is the one with the most details. There is another version that we first tell the young children. It is the simpler version so as to not get them confused. As you know, as children grow up and get older, they start asking more questions. And when they start wondering about more things, then we tell them more the complicated version. We tell them the simple version in the form of a story. We say that in the beginning, it was so cute. <laughs> All there was was just this light. No shadows or anything, just this light. But there were also spirits. And the spirits got together and said, this light is very pretty, but nothing ever happens. We are bored. We want some changes. Let us see what will happen if we make some changes. And they said, we will make this in the form of a game so that we can learn more about each other and develop and have fun. And as part of the game, they said, we have to set up a place to play our game. So they divided the light up into light and dark and they made the earth because they said, we have to have a place to go play our game. So they made the earth to go with the sun. And they said, we need a light for nighttime too. So they made the moon. And then they said, everything is set up for the game. Now we need to set up the rules for the game. And the rules for the game are that each player can play as many rounds as they like. Or if they want to drop out for two or three rounds, that is all right too. So each round in the game is when you're alive here on earth. Your spirit is here playing the game. Then when you die, that is the end of that particular round. If you decide you want to play another round, then you are born again. Or if you want to drop out for a round or two, then you do. <laughs> and time passes and later on, if you decide you want to play another round of the game, you are born again. But when we tell it to the children, we add more special effects, effects and make it really interesting for them. They also talk about how the animals help to decide how the earth should be made and what life and realities of expression they would choose. So the spirits are basically the same as we are, you know, humans. They look the way we do. When they decided to come to the earth to play their game, somehow as they came closer to the earth, they became more solid. If a child seems confused about that, we tell them that we can explain it to them better when they get older. Then we can give them the more complicated version of the story. Then we can explain how the energy divided everything to where it would be balanced. The spirits live out there in the void where it is very light and mostly energy. But as it gets closer to the earth and the more physical aspect of the universe, the light condenses down into a solid physical form. So in the children's version, nobody had to create humans. No, the way we came into existence was the spirits coming here and they simply became more solid as they got closer to the physical world. And because we're all spirits, we all really belong to the higher planes. We're all just here temporarily playing the game. 
You said the spirits decided the animals had to eat things so they could keep existing. Did they figure that humans also had to do that, had to eat? They discovered in the process of playing this game that when they made rules to apply to the animals, these rules automatically applied to themselves whether they planned on it or not. The way the universe is set up, things are balanced. Somehow, whenever they decided on how things should be, for instance, that animals have to eat in order to keep living, that made it apply to all living things, not just animals. When the spirits realized this was what was going on, they started being a lot more careful about the rules they made because they did not want to limit themselves too much and close themselves in with a bunch of rules. So, do the legends say whether this was before the old ones, you know, the ones that came here? Yes, that was before the coming of the old ones. And some of the wise ones, the elders, say that the story of the spirits deciding to come to Earth and play a game may not have necessarily been here. So, it started before. They say that are some older legends that are hardly told anymore that explain it. How can I explain this? To keep things balanced, the lights had to be similar to each other. When the light was being divided up into pieces of light, each piece of light was similar to the other pieces of light. And that's explained in the prism of Lyra um, about different energies of the stars that rep are represented as the founder's energy. So when you look at the nature of each star, it's a fracture of, of the division of the light that is one unified light. So you mean it couldn't be very different, it had to be similar. Right, you know, all comes from the same light. In order to balance out things had to be similar. So they say, consequently, it is only reasonable to think that the stars we see up in the sky are similar to the sun because they're both pieces of light. And so if the stars are similar to our sun and some of the stories pointed out that the old ones could travel unimaginable distances, it would be reasonable to think that for these lights to be similar to our sun, they would have to be far away in order to appear to us the way they do. <laughs> and it's funny because they say, well, they're not the same because they perceive them as so far away and it doesn't look, right? That's how they used to think way, way, way before, right? Because they don't look as big as the sun, exactly. So in the evening when you build up the campfire and you start walking away from it in the woods, it gets smaller and smaller. The further away you get and the more trees and such are in between, it gets very small and Flickery. Perhaps this is the reason why the sun looks so different from the stars, but it's all stars. So if this is true, then when the spirits started playing their game, it may not necessarily have been here with this earth and this sun. So it's everywhere. <laughs> Life is everywhere. It might have been somewhere else and the stories of the old ones tell about when they came here. It is really strange that you're talking um, and understanding all this. Yeah, he, he had a difficulty grasping how um, this questionnaire, Dolores, um, understands this because most of the people um, at his time do not understand this. And just because it's not physically obvious, you know, <laughs> they can't really somehow resonate with that. So, um, yeah, so that's one part. Um, I also recommend you um, to read the initial chapters, um, the creation story in the Silmarillion. Silmar Silmarillion, <laughs> the creation story, you know, it's from Tolkien. It's very much similar. Um, it's also the spirits that came here and how they created different elements, um, how everything was unfolding. It's all kind of like in alignment. It's just the language that is used is different. As you can see, one story, but uh, how it's told to the children. So it's, it keeps their innocence and it keeps them open to learning, right? And as their, the brain of the human develops, that's when they're ready to take in more. And that's how we are. So. Um, even the scientists, right, when they're receiving certain information and they're developing different theories, they're not just developing the theories, they're just remembering what is already the truth. That's already is, you know, it's a constant and although the realities that are infinite that keep shifting um, and the only constant and in the infinite vast creation is change. So that's it for today. I just meant to share this because I think it's such a cute little book. <laughs> like all of the Dolores books are super amazing. Um, I practically read um, most of them. <laughs> uh, this is probably one of the only uh, book materials I do read um, intensively and with great joy. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this little chapter. It evokes something beautiful or childlike within you. And don't forget, like they say here, the more simple and simple terms it's shared, the more it keeps the innocence and the more it keeps you open to that playful learning and not take things too seriously. So don't do that. Okay, I'll talk to you again soon and thank you for watching my Wisdom of the Star series uh, edition video and so much love to all of you out there. Bye-bye. The vastness of creation.